The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Now you may think a lot of goofy things happen on camera, Even goofier things happen off camera. We thought it would be interesting if the audience could see that as well. So in today's episode, we're going to create a Raspberry Pi based streaming webcam that you can control using the chat interface, making it go left, right, up, down to see what's going on in the shop. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. We're going to build a webcam that is controlled via a Raspberry Pi. Now we've done video projects with the Raspberry Pi in the past, such as a dog treat dispenser, but that used an off-the-shelf USB webcam. You don't get as much throughput with that since it's using the USB bus. If we get the Raspberry Pi dedicated camera module, which hooks up via a ribbon cable, we can get a lot better performance because it hooks directly into the system bus. The idea is to allow people to watch what we're doing online at certain times of the day or for events, and then hopefully be able to control where the camera's looking. So not only do we have to make it stream, but we have to make it mechanical. So here are the parts of the project. Raspberry Pi camera, Pi module, Wi-Fi dongle for streaming, power supply, and then a separate real-time servo control because we don't have a real-time operating system on the Raspberry Pi, so it's not gonna be able to send the correct pulses to the servos. Mechanically, we're going to build it from the camera backwards. So we'll start by making the up and down tilt mechanism for the camera. There's no point in looking up at the ceiling. And there's nothing interesting up there. So we'll either be looking straight out or straight down. We could mount it on top of the laser or above the laser so you could pan down and see if anything's being lasered, for instance. Once we know that works, we'll build the y-axis thing that actually moves it up and down. Then once that works, we'll build a x-axis thing that moves it left and right. And then around the x-axis, we'll build the rest of the enclosure. And that's how it will attach to the wall. Let's get started by talking to Felix about the streaming process from the Raspberry Pi. Felix, our resident Linux enthusiast, is going to take us through the steps to make the Raspberry Pi stream video. All right, what we're gonna do to stream the video is uh, first install the operating system, I'm going with the Raspbian because there's a lot of documentation for it. And then uh, first thing I wanna do is establish a network so we can wirelessly connect to the router. And then we'll install the video tools I went with uh, RaspiVid, uh, LibAV, and GStreamer. RaspiVid is what we need to do to interact with the camera module. And then next we went on and establish an account on a streaming service. And what we had to do was get a RTMP URL and a certificate. And then connect to I squared C with the Arduino. And configure an IRC bot. And then stream. Okay, so right now the Raspberry Pi is using the camera, and this is actually the Raspberry Pi's HDMI output screen. We don't need this, of course, for the wall unit. And then we have a servo control here so we can kind of simulate what it's going to be doing. So perhaps someone can, you know, say, go left, go left, go left, go left. And then they can like, oh, it's Allison, she's filming, right? They can see what's going on, or they can look down at a screwdriver, for instance. And then on your laptop there, that is the um, Ustream version of it, which is lagging behind, of course. So that is basically what people will see at home, right? Yeah, this is the stream I set up on Ustream, and it, it's going through the wireless and then out to the network and connecting via RTMP, which is real-time media protocol, or real-time messaging protocol. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so we basically have to miniaturize all of this to fit into a nice compact unit and look cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think we can do that. I don't know, what this Plastitech is pretty nice. The blue Plastitech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think, I think it's caught up to us now. Well, I think if we are going to design this, we should basically start with the camera and then work our way backwards mechanically. So that's what I'll do. Now let's look at how to mechanically build the shop cam. Here's the Raspberry Pi camera module all by itself. Have the ribbon cable hooked up for starters. Comes out the bottom of it. I drew this into the computer and then I made a 3D model of it. I'm actually gonna take the protective film off. All right. 
Now, I didn't want to waste too much plastic or time, which is actually worth a lot more than the plastic in my 3D printer. So I just printed this part first. Let's see if it fits. Okay, let's see how the camera peeks through. Looks like all the holes line up. Now I can print the whole thing. This is not a miniature smoke detector, even though that's exactly what it looks like. It is the Y housing for the camera. So I'm going to install the camera in here. Imagine if I would have printed this whole thing and the screw holes didn't work, how much time that would have wasted. That's why I printed a test. Now I want this camera to move 90 degrees. So you can look across the room or look straight down. Now servos are usually 180 degrees of motion, but you should never really rely on the extremities of that. So I'm gonna ha have this go from 20 degrees to 110 degrees. It's still 90 degrees of motion, but it's not using the lowest extremity. So I've got it hooked up to an Arduino here. I'm gonna hit reset. Okay. I'm gonna reset it when it's about halfway. Okay, so the first thing it's gonna to go to is 110. Okay, so there's 110, so that's 20 degrees. So 20 degrees is gonna be looking down. So what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna <laughs> let it go back to 110. All right, reset it, unhook it. So I'm gonna put it together with the servo in this position. So when I assemble it, this will be looking out here and that way I know where everything will land. I've attached the servo disc inside of the camera mount, and I'm going to loop the ribbon cable in such a way that when this moves back and forth, it won't bind up. Ribbon cable is meant to move. So I stopped this servo in the up position, so I wanna make sure I actually put this together in the up position. So I'm gonna put my ribbon cable through this opening, which is for the ribbon cable. It's there for a reason, it's not random. All right, now I'm gonna put this around here and then put this in here. And I'm gonna lock it in place with the camera in the horizontal position. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna put the set screw in that will hold the servo disc in place. Or I could just drop the screw you know, and cut out the middle man. Now it doesn't look like a, uh, doesn't look like a smoke alarm anymore. Now it looks like a fishing reel or something. All right, so imagine this on the wall and it's gonna, it can look out across the room or it can like look straight down. Let's test it. ba ba da ba dee ba ba dee ba boo pretty good. The way I like to design things, as I mentioned earlier, is to start with the most important thing and then work backwards. In this case, it's the camera module. So I made the camera module, then I made the disc that it sits in, then I made the disc that actuates that. The next thing I'm gonna do is make the disc that actuates that. Basically like the, this is the Y disc up and down. Now I'm gonna make the X disc to rotate this. And it'll have a slit in it, so this cable has plenty of slop to connect to the rest of it. We're going to use servos to move the camera back and forth. As I mentioned before, the Raspberry Pi isn't super great at driving servos because it doesn't have a real-time operating system. It can't send consistent pulses out of the lines, at least not with the operating system we're using. But a microcontroller, which has interrupts, is perfect for that. So I'm going to just use one of my little AVR boards here, I'll put some headers on it for servos, and I'll, that way we can embed it into the unit. So we're gonna need two servo connectors and also an I squared C connector so it can receive commands from the Raspberry Pi as to where to go. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Many of you have been asking about the little AVR board that I designed that we've used on several episodes of the show. So for today's tech timeout, I thought we'd take a closer look at it. Down here we have a six pin ISCP in circuit serial programmer header. This is for actually putting the bootloader onto the AVR AT Mega 328P using Atmel Studio 6. 
Once you have the bootloader flashed onto it, you can then use a serial header to program it. We have a separate breakout here. This is the FTDI USB to serial chip, and we don't embed this on the board because this chip costs, actually costs more than the microcontroller itself, so we have it separate to save money. Uh, reset switch, it's pretty handy to have that. A pull up resistor and a capacitor for that. Uh, 60 megahertz crystal. Then I've broken out a few things here. Uh, these headers over here are spaced so you can easily hook up servos to them. You've got ground, power, and then signal. Uh, down here we have another header that has um, power, ground, and the I squared C lines. And then everything else is broken off over here to the right. And another nice thing about having this power rail here is you can easily stick a large filter cap right there. It's a very versatile little board. I'm sure you'll see us use it again because we have more left. And when they're gone, I'll design a better one. Felix is getting the I squared C code ready. In the meantime, we're going to glue together the next part of our camera mount. So I made this in a couple pieces. There's a spacer as well as the top piece. The reason I made a spacer is because it was easier to print. The spacer needs to go right here where the flat surface is, but we also need, you know, relief inside of it. So it would have been kind of tricky to print this. So I just made the spacer as its own little piece that I will, I will screw and glue in place. Wait, you never saw Indiana Jones 4, did you, Allison? Mm -hmm. Shia LaBeouf was in that, too. That was back during the great LaBeoufing period where he was in every movie. And I don't know, I didn't think he was that bad. So I can't go too far with this right now because I have to assemble it in a certain order. Whatever the top portion is, which I haven't built yet, the um, X rotation motor will bolt into that. And then this piece will bolt up into that. Then I have to be able to use a screwdriver to attach that. And then I had to put this piece back on. So I have to put it in order of how I can, you know, get at the screws. The Raspberry Pi has an I squared C port on it. Felix has wrote a Python script which will send commands via that I squared C port to the I squared C port on an Arduino for the servo control. Let's take a look how it works. So this is basically the Raspberry Pi controlling the Arduino? Yes. All right, and we compacted it in one byte because it was easier to do for the protocol. So it's an eight bit number and the MSB, or most significant bit, if it's a zero, it's gonna be an X axis command. If it's a one, it's gonna be a Y axis command. So if he types one, it'll go to one extreme. If he types 127, it'll go to the other. And then if he types 64, it should be centered. And then for the up and down motion, uh, 255 would be one extreme, and then 128 would be the other. All right, and then 192 would center it vertically. Yes, that's correct. All right, so this is our I squared C communication between the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. Here are most of the parts for this project. What I need to do is um, basically replicate what Felix had wired up but I need to put it inside of this cylinder that I 3D printed last night. This is gonna be like the main housing. I need to remove a few things off of the Raspberry Pi so it'll fit snugly, mostly the um, useless audio jacks. We don't need all of the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. What we need is power, ground, three volt reference, and then I squared C. So I've attached this connector so we can get all those signals off of it. Ooh, I'm gonna put some hot glue on it just to make sure the wires don't move. Because if the wires move too much, they could uh, cause the pins to bend and break. I made a silver mark here so I could remember the orientation of the video cable. There we go. Nice. These connections are always going to give you higher speed than the USB port. The USB port, if you have a single port Raspberry Pi, it's hooked directly up to the system on a chip, but if you have a two port Raspberry Pi with two USB and an ethernet, it actually goes through this chip, which can slow it down a little bit. 
Okay, and then we also need our wireless dongle. And I think that's it. Hey, you better be nice to me if you want to get your Game of Thrones coffee table book for Christmas. So you know everything. It's like, oh, his name is Littlefinger, not Little Hand. Huh, mind blown. Thrill as Ben struggles to insert something into a tube. Now that the Raspberry Pi is in place, I'm gonna use these handy screw holes to screw it in place. So this goes down to the camera. And you can still get at the SD card. Yay! The next thing I have to do is attach this to the um, Arduino. So Felix and I worked on some code, so his Python code could communicate with the Arduino code. I have to attach an IR sensor, two servos, and the I2C bus, as well as power. Now I'm going to do a test to see how much power this is gonna require, because I wanna make sure that it has enough. These servos take a good amount of power. We could have used smaller servos, but I had these laying around. So this is a uh, five volt wall wart, 750 milliamps. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, we can assume, will take 500 or less because you know you can hook it up to a USB, and USB is usually 500 or less. I'm gonna hook the power up in series with the multimeter set to amp so I can see how much current it's drawing. Going to set my fluke to min max, so it'll show us the spike when we move the servos. There it is. Okay, so 263 milliamps, about a quarter of an amp. Now I've got the Raspberry Pi hooked up to the power supply and the multimeter so we can see how much amperage it's drawing or current. Uh, it's streaming, it's actually taking a good amount, uh, about 0.62 amps. So if we had this going and ran, ran servos at the same time, it probably wouldn't work. It would probably short out the power supply or cause it to fail or brown out. So we need a bigger power supply. I went out and bought a powered USB hub so I could get its power supply. So USB ports can supply up to 500 milliamps. So if you have a powered USB hub that has four USB ports, that means it would need to supply up to two amps. So that's a really good bet to find a five volt, in this case, 2.5 amp power supply. So this should power everything easily. And I put an inline switch on it. I'll probably make a little container for this, but right now it's just loose. So this will give us our five volts, nice and clean. We still have a capacitor just in case. And we'll power both the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino with this supply. Let's put it over here for now. I'm gonna start by just making sure everything rotates. I'll just put this into place along with the IR sensor, which is going to go in this little hole that I drilled someplace. Oh, there it is. That'll be in the front of the unit. So I can see the remote control. And then I also have to wire in the level shifter, so I'll have to remove it from this board. Because the Raspberry Pi is 3.3 volt, the Arduino is five volts, and those don't mix. I mean, you can go from three volt to five volt, but not the other way around, so we don't wanna fry the Pi. Let's put this in place. Pull the camera module through, and the camera module will go like that. So right now it's centered, so I'm gonna put this in place centered left and right. Okay, now I shall affix the screw into the servo. Really like this white filament, I think it looks cool. Print's nice too. All right, let's try it. It goes uh, 10 degrees at a time. And it'll stop you once it gets up to about 170 degrees. Okay, I can go back home. All right. I'm gonna remove that servo and hook up the other servo. The reason I'm doing that is because the USB probably doesn't have enough power to do two of these servos at the same time. Okay, so now I've got the servo. Let's make sure it works. Home it. All right, make sure it's home. Okay. I'm going to remove it. I'll label it the Y servo, because it's up and down. It's a pretty poor looking Y, but whatever. 
Uh, earlier in this build, you might remember I said that I was going to build it backwards, and this is an example of that. So. Okay, uh, we have both of the servos working. The camera's installed. So now I'm going to put in the IR sensor so it'll be visible in the front. I'm just gonna hot glue it in place. And I have everything with plugs so it can be easily taken apart. So this plug will go into the Arduino module. All right, time to test it. Well, it definitely moved be a little bit for the stream to link up. Blah. Again, the Raspberry Pi could also send commands. Uh, that's why we had the level shifter, but I'm just testing it with the infrared. Okay, everything seems to be working, so I can button it up and do a final demonstration. To recap, we used a Raspberry Pi along with the Raspberry Pi camera module to create a streaming Pi along with a Wi-Fi dongle that can go to any streaming service. Right now, it's going to a specific Ustream page. So it's active right now. You can see the red lights on. Then I made a mechanical enclosure so it could also move left and right, up and down. And it can be controlled either with an IR remote like this one I have here or via commands from the Raspberry Pi or the Ustream's chat window. Okay, to test it, I'm gonna set these cookies out, and when Allison gets back from lunch, I'm gonna see if she tries to eat them. Let's see what happens. <laughs> She's gonna fall for this big time. I knew it. You mind if I do? Get away from my cookies, girl! That'll learn ya. Really? The Raspberry Pi shop cam is up and working. We'll be announcing our first broadcast and the broadcast schedule on the Element 14 community. Click the link below for more information. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be building a little free library. I'm not sure what that is, but we're going to build it anyway. We'll see you then. It clearly wasn't aimed at you. Why'd you wince? <laughs> Let's see what happens. Spoiler warning, she'll eat them. Rick, you gotta take care of your people. It's not your baby. Well, Lori, it might be my baby. No! Freeze, varmint! Get away from my cookies! Kingsbury always plays his debts. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I throw my cat up in the air sometimes. <laughs> Private eyes are watching you. <laughs> Maybe it's a smoke detector and it's looking for the smoke. Parker and I came up with this pinball idea called Space Truckers. Uh, I think you might have just unplugged it. Over the shoulder, older, molder, shoulder, boulder, holders, Collie's colder. Hey, Allison asked the robot if it's gonna let you live. Are you gonna let me live? Is Ben cool? Hmm. I don't think this thing is telling the truth. <laughs> I don't trust him. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs>